Welcome back to Vision on TV. We're here on the last day of Climate Camp and we've just had an amazing workshop on the subject of multiracial organising, certainly a very hot topic at the moment in Climate Camp. We're speaking to Graham from the African and Caribbean Network in Glasgow and Dan from So We Stand, yep. yeah, a UK organisation. Just tell me briefly what your organisations do. Uh, we're the umbrella body for about 40 different African and Caribbean organisations in Glasgow amongst a population of about 10,000 people. Uh, we represent asylum seekers, refugees, cultural artists, all sorts of people. Okay, and my understanding from you before is that uh, African and Caribbean, that those communities are broader than just from Africa and just what we... Yes. You tell me who's included? Well, because Latin Americans, Arab people, uh, Afro-Scottish people, of course, people of mixed heritage, so we're all inclusive. And white Caribbeans, yes. and quite a broad range, yeah? Yeah. And Dan, what, what does So We Stand do? Uh, so We Stand strives for environmental justice on, or consciously on race, class and gender grounds, using popular education and direct action and methods to, to build a movement to fight for environmental justice. Why, why, why do we need to think about multiracial organising? Well, I would say that without it, we won't get a properly inclusive movement around climate change. But more to the point, I think we've said it in a lot of the workshops and in the discussions, uh, black communities in, in are most likely to be more affected by climate change issues than other communities. They're likely to be disproportionately affected. And the problem is that they're disproportionately active on the subject. And there are a number of barriers to their involvement which have been discussed in the workshops. They can be partly due to not being able to lose a job and therefore be protesting in an airport. If you're working at the airport, it may be that uh, uh, the level of consciousness is not quite the same or that the level of priority they give to climate change as an issue is not the same as the daily why, struggle. Why isn't it the same? Um, Especially if they're more, if they're more affected. Well, uh, saying, it, it, I think it's not the same because we don't start with the same organisational experience. We don't start with the same uh, relationship to the state. And obviously, uh, for African Caribbean people in Britain, it's a, uh, a long-standing issue of us and confronting state authorities. That doing direct action is a, is a big step for us. And, we have done it when it's come to anti-racism issues and to questions of deportations and the question is then to do that around climate change issues and connecting it with the, the struggle for racial equality and justice which is obviously closely connected but it's raising people's consciousness and awareness that that is the case and therefore why they should be at things like the climate camp. So what's going on at climate camp then? I mean we've had a discussion for uh, what two years? Three, four, how many years has this been raised at climate camp that basically we don't have a very ethnically diverse. Well, do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, very much so. There was always the debate about whether um, Climate Camp, who's one of their main aims is movement building, genuinely does that on race, class and gender grounds, or whether it's tokenistic or, or, or on a solution basis. Well, what can we do to build a broad movement? And there's been many discussions about the connecting areas, as Graham talks about, between why climate change is an issue of racial justice, the disproportionately communities in the global south who are you affected. Mean even by, you know, yeah, so racial justice, environmental justice, terms like this. What do I mean by that? Yeah. Yeah, environmental justice. Um, Sorry, is... racial justice. How does racial justice relate to the issue of climate change? OK, OK, there's very... There's a a few converging areas why climate change is an issue of race and therefore justice for communities of colour who are affected. So there are some main areas where there are connections is the global north, you could say the west, has caused most of the problems. Um, majority white males in the top of organisations such as BP and, and Shell, but disproportionately it's black communities in the global south who are affected, Asia, Africa, people on the front how, line. Give me an example of how they're affected. Bangladesh, for example, one of the iconic communities facing rising sea levels. Mm -hmm. um, and yet they're not really the guys who cause the problems. Go to Nigeria, Shell, the oil exploration there. Predominantly white guys who are coming from the north to explore for oil, employing local workers and devastating the, the local communities there. Canada, tar sands, indigenous communities there, um, communities of colour affected by heavy emissions. Does this speak, like, does this, does many this examples. speak to... Um does this speak to your community, this way of describing problems, the language that's being used, the terms? Well, clearly the concepts are not familiar with a large percentage of my community. And part of the, the, the task is to really the political education of why we would need to do this and why we should take up a fight for racial justice connected with uh, environmental justice. And for obvious points that, that Dan's raised about in the work that he's done, let's say with Heathrow Airport, you know, the people who lived in that flight path are predominantly Asian, but multi-ethnic, predominantly 
multi ethnic community and they would have been living on that flight path, they would have been the ones most affected, they were the ones who lost their home. So are they involved in so the struggle or they were in, in this case, in the case yeah. that they, they So what yeah. worked? Why were they involved in that one and, and we don't see so much diversity in other I would say that they, they involved the community organisations that were there that had a record of struggle. If the monitoring group is a good example because they had a, a long track record of organising the community in of agents in South Hall against racism and against the police violence and they had a track record built solid organisation and made solidarity with all sorts of other issues with Stephen Lawrence campaign with John Charles. So, they have, a pre so they have a pre-existing record of struggle and yep. history of taking direct action actually but on other issues so then the question is to engage those groups get them on board and they indeed share an agenda and change and that's what I suppose us and Dan are doing that we're we're new to this 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 business so we're new to fighting climate change we began How's last year by working they together. began last year okay yeah, so you so. began last year working together you've been working together for a year uh -huh, uh -huh. and what have you achieved and what challenges are you facing yeah you, you, have you got as far as you wanted to? Oh God, no, no. Look, the problem of, of climate change and social injustice is getting worse. But initially, when was it? In October 2009, we did an event together called um, "Why Why Black Is the New Green," talking about the. How, how was that? I mean, you know, some people think that's racist to sort of talk like that, terms like that. How does that come across to your community? That that kind of phrase. Um, well, I wouldn't say that, no. Uh, black is a political colour, as well as uh, uh, green is a political colour. But black in the anti-racist context means in, you know, the people of colour who are affected by racism and are struggling against it, who come together to self-organise and look for allies you know, in other struggles. And one of those allies and other movements and struggles is the environmental movement, the green movement. So we want to show that actually it's cool and it's black. It's pro-black to be green, but to be active. <laughs> And it shouldn't I'm be seeing seen. a very good T-shirt slogan coming. We out. have the T-shirt, trust me. <laughs> and a have, hat and a bracelet, yeah. environmentally friendly. But we put out leaflets to say that. We said, look, this is a, a Nigerian activist in, against climate change in the Niger Delta, whose community is affected mostly by it, mostly indigenous communities, by British oil companies. He's coming over to talk about what they are doing. We, as Nigerians, as Africans here in Scotland, we have to find out about that. So we brought how, how is, how is that Dan, received? Dan was mainly responsible for making sure we could do that. It was received very well. It went really well. It's the first meeting we've ever really had between African community people and environmental activists, and it, it, it did work. And since then? Well, it can also be quite uncomfortable for, for white activists, um, because, you know, on one hand, if Climate Camp claims to be movement building, and yet it's not representative of, of, or anywhere near representative, you can never really be representative of, of the UK, for example, then it could be quite an uncomfortable thing, you know, by saying that you are one thing and, and not be, and also getting well, out sorry, of your... Sorry, so it's uncomfortable for a white activist to be it, part of a movement that says it's got diversity and it hasn't. Is well, it also uncomfortable having to work in a different way? It, Do you have to work in a different way with your communities? Yes, it takes a lot longer, I would say. Okay. It, partly because I'm, I'm, we're in a network, so there's 40 different organisations to think about and, and ask. And that's just in Glasgow? And that's just in my city, in right. my organisation. So and no plans for expansion yet, then? <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay. So, so just doing that, it takes long enough. So even to get to the point where I was able to, with the consent of my committee, to come to the climate change and represent us. Here today, that, to this That's workshop. a year's yeah. A year's work to get yeah, yeah. you here today. And talking, exchanging information to get to the point where does we're that, here. How does that make you feel? Is that a bit well, tiring, thinking about all that time? Do we have time to do this? I mean, you know, well, we've got a, a climate is, who, crisis. Who are, we fighting, who are we fighting climate as a white person? Who are we fighting climate change for? I don't, I'm not fighting climate change to come out of the other end and just be surrounded by white middle class people. That's not what I'm in it for. Uh, part of the reason of, for fighting climate change and social injustice is for the diversity of life. And we, if we're not, we're just being as bad as, as the oppressors as such. If we're not building for justice in, in, a, in a beautiful and diverse way, I'm not, I'm not fighting climate change to just save myself. Okay. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of people are in it for that as well. And also the other reason why we need to build broad-based, diverse, radical movements is because we've got a lot of stuff to do. You we know, sure do. climate camp <laughs> on our own, the people involved, a tiny demographic of people who are doing great stuff are not going to fight the problem. What we need to do is build a movement to support everyone to take the necessary action for So if someone's justice. watching right now, they want to get involved in this, they're, they're right on this topic, they want to do something, what, what can they do? Anywhere they can go? Yeah, uh, I wish there was a simple um, strategy um, just yet, but there's many different groups, for example, seeing what's in your community, such as the African Caribbean Networking in Glasgow, such as the Monitoring Group in London or the Capacity Global in London, linking up with Sorry, groups. Sorry, so that organisation's called? 
Capacity Global. Capacity Global, and or, they've got a website? Yeah, capacity.org.uk. Okay, any other websites you want to direct us to? Uh, there's the monitoring group. You'd have to just Google them. It's something like tmg.org.uk. So okay. we stand. It's a rubbish website at the moment. It's called... Um, it'll be improved. It's all the journey. Yeah, it's yeah. a DIY Education Collective. Excellent. And anything you want to suggest? Well, you can find out about what we do in, uh, at www and Sorry, say that again? A, at acnglasgow.org. ACN OK. Thanks very much. You've been on Vision on TV and uh, tune in for the next episode. I'm Kate and uh, have a good camp if anyone's still here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks.